when you're in pain Soothing as a springtime rain To have a friend right in your corner Your heart will feel a little warmer Tender, loving care Tender, loving care Each warm and friendly touch Let someone know you care so much Tender, loving Good evening, I'm Dr. Greenbrier Almond, and thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Each week on Channel 3, I've had the opportunity over the past 37 years to be talking about uh, this interface between Christianity and medicine. And as you can tell, I have a very special guest tonight, Leslie Kennedy. Leslie, welcome to our program. Thank you. You know, I'm so glad that you are coming on because uh, we're going to talk for a spell about creativity and the Holy Spirit and how God works through you as a poet and, and hopefully uh, others will be inspired uh, by, by what you do uh, and uh, I'm very, as I say, I'm very glad you're on. And I should say, uh, Leslie and I are in the same Sunday school class <laughs> at the First United Methodist Church. And I have been really, really impressed that uh, she, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, can come up with a poem every week about the lesson. And it, it's quite remarkable, and it's, it's quite a gift. So thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, for folks may know you, maybe they won't know you, but uh, you and your husband, Nate, and your two boys have come here to Buchanan about how many years ago now? Oh. Over 10. Okay. Over 10. A while. And uh, it takes a while before you are considered local, huh? <laughs> oh, maybe the next generation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us a little bit about yourself uh, because uh, you have an interesting past. We were talking before we came on the program. Uh, your uh, dad was in the Air Force. The Army Air Force. Army Air Force. Okay. The Way Army back. Air Army Air Corps. Yeah. So you, you traveled around some and uh, have seen a good bit of the West primarily. Yeah, mostly the West. That's where he has family. That's where his roots are. Um, he's passed away, um, and uh, it was very pleasant that he, the veterans mm -hmm. made a, a place for him. Well, that's good. And you're a veteran, too. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I'm partial to veterans. Anyone who's watched <laughs> this, I, my career has been with the VA, uh, and, and, uh, and, of course, I've had a lot of veterans on as guests, and you, too, then. Yes, I, I am a veteran, and um, I uh, fortunately uh, can use the Veterans Center, and I, I've got to say that the Women's Center is just wonderful, so well, I'm, good. I'm going to put a plug in for it. Okay. And... Um, with some 25 percent, and I, I've used this number uh, for the current war, uh, are women in the service now. So women are more and more active. I, I imagine when you were there, it was a smaller percentage. It was, it was a considerably smaller yeah. percentage, yes. Yeah. Yes, and uh, I was in it in the 70s and at the end of the Vietnam War and at the very beginning of peacetime mm -hmm. straddles when my service was. Okay. And, and, and your husband as a... Uh, Forester, yes, and, he is. And of course, he's been on before with the Boy Scouts. We we have the Boy Scouts on. I, it's probably been about twenty five years. I've been doing this God and me and and God and family and and uh, the uh, Troop One Twenty Eight at First United Methodist Church. And your husband's been the uh, Scoutmaster now for several years. Yes, he loves the Boy Scouts, and he thinks it's just a very worthwhile and viable mm -hmm. program. And he really loves the kids, and he just thinks. It, it gives them such learning skills for life. Mm -hmm. And you and you have two boys who are growing up well. Uh, yep, all both of them Westland College students. Excellent. One's yeah. a graduate and one's on his last year. Okay, well, very good. So you you'll you'll have a and it's hard for kids to leave the nest uh, now. I mean, economically, it's hard to get started. But uh, yeah, but I I think they're both going to fly kids, and do yeah. fine. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, about how uh, God has worked with you and and through poetry. Uh, I mean, you it's quite a gift, isn't it? Not everyone can write songs or write poetry. Uh, but we all can do something, can't we? I mean, the, 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 if we allow ourselves, the Holy Spirit will work with us in a creative way, in a new and wonderful way. Well, God has so many gifts for so many people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, for me, uh, writing and stories and rhyming has all rhyming started with my mom hmm, okay when we were little kids and she would be doing the dishes <clears throat> we would go up and ask her a question and then she would rhyme the answer with the last word of the question wow. oh my goodness and so then she'd want us to rhyme our response back uh-huh. okay and so in that way she taught us a good vocabulary hmm. Wow. And we yeah. didn't know it. We just had fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but you so, were getting something. Well, so my we mother made puns. So so if you, if I'm talking very long, I'm going to start making puns. So <laughs> we learned things <laughs> from our mother. <laughs> but, yeah, um, when I was asked um, to do a poem off the lesson, mm-hmm. I was... I just didn't know how to say no, mm-hmm. so I said yes, and, <laughs> <laughs> and and so I said yes, and mm-hmm. I read diligently, and I read. Uh, our uh, lessons come out of our um, devotional called the Discipline, and it call, follows what we call the lectionary, mm-hmm. and it's Bible verses, and studying the New Testament over three years time mm-hmm. the, and so, yeah, the first and, three and, books and so so and really John. you get through the whole uh, all, all the gospel lessons in in three years and it's but it's quite and you can plan ahead that way though can't you because it's all it's all published ahead of time though we just take that segment every week so every week I read ahead and I read what the authors, have written about those verses and their thoughts, and then I reread and I read some more, and maybe I read other things, and I pray a lot. Mm. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. And a lot of times I just let it cook in the back burner, and uh, then I sit down and I pray and I start to write. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, like this last week's, Subject, which was on justice. Justice, uh huh, yeah. Out of Micah, I really didn't know how to write a poem about justice. Mm-hmm. And I found that you have to know how to ask the right question to get the right words from the Holy Spirit sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, these are, and of course, these are abstract thoughts, aren't they? I mean, there is no. Uh, when Jesus taught, he often taught with parables. He would go to the concrete example, but he was trying to teach an abstract thought. And, and justice is, is like that. I mean, we, we know what it is, but, but yet it's hard to imagine. Uh, we all want justice. We want, we want fairness, don't we? We want what is right. We want what is good. And, uh, <laughs> but we, it's hard to define. And put in one poem. Yes, okay, yes, that, that's it. You use the term back burner. I, I like that. I mean, I mean, not that women should cook and so forth, but but it's a cooking term, isn't it? I mean, in, in a sense, the stove has a front burner, back burner. Uh, when my wife is cooking, I notice that if something's about ready, she puts it on the back burner and turns it down to low, and let it simmer a little bit, or or you know, prepare itself further. Well, and in the olden days, in the pioneer days. Sometimes they would have what was called an all-day pot. Okay. And it would be put on a warmer area where it wouldn't get too hot, Mm. where it wouldn't really particularly cook, but it would keep things warm. Uh Uh-huh. And things could get added to it if they were cooked. Okay. And stuff. And that way, when people were coming in and out from working on the Mm -hmm. farm crews or milking the cows in the freezing cold winter time, they could have something warm to eat right away and mm. warm up their hands with. And 
being as that's the kind of ancestry I come from. Okay. It's cooking on the back burner, having it sitting there and and like a good stew, you know, just thickening and getting richer mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and more flavorful yeah, as it right. sits there. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to me. Yeah, you know, there's another another uh, meaning that comes to my mind uh, is thinking about this as, a, as a who America is or who we are as Americans. Uh, I, I grew up with the idea that we are a melting pot. And then, but someone has said, no, we're a tall salad. Uh, and we, we, in other words, we can maintain some distinctiveness, uniqueness, but we blend together. And, and I've, I've learned uh, from good cooks, you know, you can add a little touch of spice, a little touch of this, but, but it's still distinctive. It doesn't, it doesn't lose its uh, uniqueness. Uh, if it's, you do it's it cooked. just right, it's, yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. Right, right. But so that, that is that is how that's I, how you create. And, that's how I create. Uh huh. And uh, do you do you find that you uh, is there a like read two le two lessons ahead or, or or does it matter? I mean, you just have to give yourself a time to simmer. Do you have a sort of a certain amount of time? I guess is what I'm thinking. It, there is. Okay. Sometimes it's. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's. Right. Okay, you know it's Saturday, Lord, and Sunday's tomorrow. And could mm -hmm. you kind of give me something? Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, and and if people are on Facebook, and I'm going to just variation of something here, but but uh, something happened to me uh, when the Buckhannon River froze uh, this this past couple weeks, and it was uh, unique, wasn't it? It didn't doesn't happen very often, uh, but I was taken back to 1959 or 1960 when the Dean twins drowned in the river. When it was frozen and they were sleigh riding and they went down under the ice and, and drowned. Oh, it was a, a tragedy of our town. And um, I wrote about it. Not that I had thought about it very much, but, but I was walking and I said, boy, is the river frozen. This is, I, then I was back in 1959 and 1960 and I, and I put that out on Facebook and I got a huge response. I'm, all sorts of people remembered that event and then they remembered parts of it and, and it was, it was neat. Uh, but th that, that, thought simmered for uh, 50 years. <laughs> and I guess that happens sometimes too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's look at uh, some concrete examples here. We're going to share uh, uh, several poems tonight, uh, but let, let me read a portion of Micah. Should I just go to the eighth verse or, or read the uh, all eight verses uh, up to that? Whatever pleases you. Okay. Okay. Well, I want to I want to cover your poems well. Um, Micah is um, uh, a prophet in the in the Old Testament, and um, I'll, I'll start with the first verse. Hear what the Lord says: Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Let your mountains hear hear you, mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with His people. And he will contend with Israel. So here we are in the mountains, and, and uh, the prophet is talking about the mountains and the hills, settling this controversy and being involved with the Lord. Uh, so so it, 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 it puts us in that, that mode that we're in here. But let me go to the eighth verse. Uh, and he says, He has told you, O mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. So a little formula there, and our overall theme was doing justice. And and that inspired you to what? You share with us, Leslie. Well, it was Saturday, and I'm like, Lord, give me something, please. And I still didn't get anything. And so finally I said, Justice, Lord. I need to know... How does your justice flow? And so then I got a response because I asked it right. Mm -hmm. Through love's door that Christ opened forevermore so that people are no longer weighted down by sin and can stand up and look around. Mm -hmm. And now, my children, help the least and the lost, the hurting, wherever they are found. Justice is food for the hungry, clothes for the naked, shelter for the homeless, 
education for the unlearned, skills for the jobless, dignity for everyone, and especially, especially the good news. Christ is come. I love them. My kingdom is here where my love flows, and my spirit moves, and my children grow. Hmm, okay. Um, now, let me kibitz off that a little bit and, and ask, you know, how you, the, the justice part as I see it. Um, we, you mentioned about the uh, children growing, uh, education. Uh, we're having a, a levy. Uh, vote this Saturday, um, and it's it's nine percent of our budget for our school system. But we're unique, aren't we? As as human beings, uh, we don't birds of the air. They can they have instinct. They can know something, uh, but we learn, don't we? And we learn in 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 a, in a loving, caring environment. Most of us. Yeah, I mean, well, we we can learn negative lessons too, can't we? But yes. But uh, but. If, uh, the teachers that uh, we that are taught us the best, uh, they were fair. They were they 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 were strict, uh, but we knew they cared for us too. That's true. The, my yeah. favorite teachers were those. Mm-hmm. Right, and and uh, so so in terms of justice, go over that again about the, um, uh, the about the middle there. There's something about the, uh, the children learning. Um, Education for the unlearned? Unlearned, yeah, for the unlearned. Education for the unlearned. Uh, that, no. that speaks to more than just the children. Okay, okay. That, the, but then we're all children to mm-hmm. God. That's so true. that pretty yeah. much speaks to all of us. Right, we're all ignorant, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. According to God's wisdom, yeah. Um, what, what, how do you look at that as, as a, I mean, uh, as a poet and, and we, we are... Uh, we're here to learn lessons, aren't we? I mean, in other words, um, uh, if we don't learn the lesson first time, God gives us another chance sometimes. I mean, but there's someday if we don't learn the lesson, there's no more chances. Uh, but we're unlearned. We have to learn the lesson. Well, I think that there's opportunities every day to learn mm, lessons. Okay. There's opportunities every day to choose how to behave. And those are the lessons that we're really interest, God's really interested in. He's not interested in how much money you can make. Mm-hmm. He's not interested in are you styling. He's not interested in the kind of car you drive. Mm-hmm. He's interested in were you kind to that person who needed kindness? Did you smile encouragement at someone who needed some Mm -hmm. encouragement? He's interested in these little tiny itty bitty things that you wouldn't think about, the little encounters in your life. Micah speaks to this uh, in in the eighth verse again. Uh, He has told you, oh mortal, uh, someone who's going to die someday, we're we're all uh, mortal, aren't we? What is good? He's trying to tell us what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with your God. Uh, I've been reading, my son has given me uh, Benjamin Franklin for my birthday. So mm-hmm. I've been reading Benjamin Franklin. And uh, Benjamin Franklin uh, lived among the Quakers, though he was not Quaker. But, but he was he believed in God and the God of creation. And, uh, but he, but he, uh, he was preparing a list of traits along this line of justice and love, kindness, and and uh, anyway, he, he listed all the traits he could think of, and he presented it to a Quaker. The Quaker looked at the 12 traits and said, you forgot humility. <laughs> 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 so he added humility. <laughs> and it's there, isn't it, to walk humbly with your God. Okay, well, very good. Uh, well, tell, tell us more. You have another poem about... about uh, Creativity and about your ability to be a poet and and and, and uh, walk with God. Well, I, I have a poem that after thinking about all the poems I've been blessed mm-hmm. to write. Mm-hmm. And by uh, the way, we're going to ask you to to uh, read poems and share your thoughts uh, over the next couple months. Yes. So <laughs> praise God. <laughs> yes. I, I'm so excited about it. 
another time I couldn't say no. <laughs> uh, I was thinking how blessed I was to be able to do these poems for my for my friends in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, you know, I really should thank the Holy Spirit mm. who gives me all this wonderful connection with God and and uh, helps things cook well on my back burner and helps me know how to ask the right question. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote this thank you to the Holy Spirit. My heart quickens. My soul lightens and glows whenever I think of you, O Holy Spirit, lover of my soul. You come to me with gladness. You come to me with love. You come to me as teacher. You come, a reminder, gentle as a dove. You lead me on the paths, the paths God has for me, and shine your light of love, so with prayer my path I see. When life becomes hard, you pray for me, when instead of a path I seem upon a stormy sea. You guide my words, you guide my words, you guide my deeds so I can tell the good news, so I can plant some seeds. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with me today, for being with me everlastingly, for being with me when I pray. Hmm, excellent. You know, uh, we're three parts. We're body, mind, and spirit. Um, and uh, the solar part is the one that's undernourished for most of us. I'll speak for myself, and, I, and <laughs> I have had to, uh, but I've had the rare privilege as a psychiatrist, uh, the word psyche actually means soul, and, and not that that's the way we practice psychiatry as a medical profession, but, but, but there's been opportunities that other people have not had to, to listen to our soul or develop that soul. But, but that's what you're talking about here. Uh, the Holy Spirit is now uh, like, like a plant being watered. You're, you're nourishing a part of you. Well, that God is nourishing. God is nourishing God is that. God is nourishing God, that. Yeah, that's right. And then out of that, there's something coming forth. Yeah, but, and that helps, that helps your whole being. It helps your mm -hmm. mental state. It helps, mm -hmm. and when your mental state is helped, it helps your physical state. Mm -hmm. And so, even though my flesh really objects a lot of times, mm -hmm. uh, to my spiritual mm -hmm. wants. Um, in the long run, my flesh actually benefits from it mm -hmm. because it makes me a more relaxed person right. and able to function better. Mm -hmm. You know, there's and, and uh, that understanding of how uh, powerful the spirit is and the soul is compared to the flesh, it, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, I know I've, I, when I first observed this, probably 40 years ago, that there were some old, old, old people in our town, dear people, who would live to their 50th anniversary wedding date, and, and then the, the couple would pass away together. I'm thinking of the Himes family, uh, That's Myron Himes and, and his wife, and they, they, both, uh, they both died within a season of each other, but, but they both lived to a very ripe old age. Uh, and I, I, I don't know, I don't, I think their soul was willing that they should live, you know, before the, and their body was wearing out. And, and uh, it happens over and over again. If you look at um, how many people uh, follow the obituary next year uh, at Christmas time, or how many old farmers will live past the strawberry festival before they die. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know, there's something to this. I mean, uh, the soul is so powerful over the flesh, over the flesh. Yeah. Well, I, I can believe that. Yeah. And so, so, so you're, you're strengthening your, your, God is strengthening your spirit when you ask him to. I mean, this is a prayer. You, you have a prayer. Well, he, it needs all the help it can get. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, well, you have another one. We wanted to share three tonight. We want to see if we can. Uh, we, we, we don't know how fast this will go in future weeks, but, uh, but that's okay. We've got plenty of time. All right. Okay. Well, this, this one, I was thinking about how much energy, how much power and strength it takes to make a Christian a child of God. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and how it's not humanly possible. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of got the rhythm of a Dr. Seuss rhyme to it. And it's easier to listen to with your eyes closed. So, and I, I listened to it with my eyes closed before the program started. So if you want to close your eyes over there in TV land, uh, then you will hear this in a different way. There is a key, a key to making me, making me to be, to be the creation, the creation God intends. God intends me to be amazing. To be amazing, I need the key. The key to be God's amazing. God's amazing creation I can be. I can be God's creation only with, only with the God key can I be. Can I be truly me through Christ the key? Christ the key makes me free to be, free to be God's by the triune key. The triune key, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit in me helping me helping me to be a child of God. Child of God, Christ's sacrifice has made me. Made me a child of God, God's creation. God's creation by Christ the key, by God the key, by the Holy Spirit the key. So much power it takes for me to be God's child set free. Hmm, okay. Now as a granddad um, to three little granddaughters, (laughs) <laughs> you know, I. It's amazing the the love that the bond, uh, and God has that love for us, doesn't He? Oh yes. And and so uh, that that's part of the key. Oh yeah. And and it, but it's it's uh, until you experience it, you don't know. But you have to let yourself experience it. I think that's what parenthood's about. Mm-hmm. I think parenthood's about seeing that newborn child Mm -hmm. and getting that sense of love Mm -hmm. I think mothers when they're expecting get a head start Mm -hmm. over the dads right right and that's pretty neat but sorry guys (laughs) well it's true though but then when I saw Nate carrying Paul out of the out of the birthing room and he didn't seem to really touch the floor I I could see where the yeah, bond was clicked yeah. there. And I think that... You know, as a doctor, I'm very glad that, that doc- fathers are allowed in the birthing room and, and that they are part of that experience. It adds to that. We, you know, there's that imprinting the moment. Uh, mm-hmm. Physiological, that's a term of uh, how ducks will imprint with a, a mother duck or something or, or or sometimes a cat. <laughs> but, 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 yeah, there's a bond that forms uh, right there at birth. Yeah, and uh, so so you 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 find that relationship with God nurtured by your poetry. Yes. Okay, and this is I think this is probably why I'm interested in Leslie talking to us about poetry, and you're going to have an opportunity perhaps uh, to write poetry if you, I mean if you let yourself do this if you learn from her over the next several weeks and and months and um, and then uh, if you if you want to. Uh, get into this more, um, uh, join our Sunday school class. I mean, that's one way to do it, but uh, Leslie lives here in town. You can talk with her anytime, but but come back next week for the next program, or, or not maybe not next week, but the programs after this, from the 18th on through the 25th, or through the, um, the uh, middle of April. Um, uh, we'll be talking about uh, poetry and how it's done and, and uh, how the scriptures are interweaving into that. So thank you very much, Leslie, for coming on. You're welcome. Special thanks to Channel 3 for this opportunity to come your way each week. We look forward to a season of poetry and inspiration uh, from the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week. Stories of a West Virginia Doctor, written by Dr. Harold D. Allman. A collection of 55 short stories about his experience as a small-town doctor in central West Virginia. And tender, loving care. Stories from a West Virginia Doctor, Volume 2, written by Dr. Greenbrier Allman. Using videotapes to write 70 additional stories of his father's very colorful life as a small-town doctor. They can be found for purchase at Amazon.com and most local bookstores. Tune into Channel 3 Buckhannon for Tender Loving Care with Dr. Greenbrier Allman, where he talks about the connection between Christianity and medicine.